Hey guys, it's Kylie and welcome to the Making Small Talk show. This is the first episode with the official name of the Making Small Talk show hosted by me, Kylie of Kylie in Kentucky. And um, today it's just me, but we are going to have, I'm going to have guests in the future. I'm so used to co-hosting my podcast, Mrs. Ambitious with my co-host Blaine, which is on iTunes and Spotify. But this is a video show potentially I'll make it an audio show for iTunes as well. But right now, if you're watching this, you're either on YouTube or you're on my website. So thanks for being here and hanging out with me today. I'm going to try to keep it pretty short, but this could get long-winded because I have a lot to say about today's topic, which is blogging. But before I get into that, I want to give a shout out to the person that helped me come up with the name of the show. And that's Kristen Vermilia of the How to Fail podcast. When I posted the episode, I think it was a solo episode of just me, uh, when I first had the idea for a YouTube or video talk show, I asked people for help with names, and an honorable mention has to go to Candice of, I believe her store is Julington Market, and she said Kylie in Kentucky, which I think is so cute, but making small talk just was the perfect fit for this because this is going to be a talk show about making things, whether you just like to make art for your own enjoyment or whether you are creating a business based on art. So on the Mrs. Ambitious podcast, we talk about general business things, motivational things. Here, this is more of like an art creative type of show. So I'm really excited. And like I said, I'm going to be talking about blogging today. And now we'll actually get into it. And this is not sponsored at all, but I just have to show you my Lindsay Letters mug. It says all the praise hands on it. And I am so ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously obsessed with her mugs. I think they are so cute and they're the perfect size. And I'll be sipping out of this throughout the episode. So like I said, I'm going to be talking about blogging because blogging is one of those topics that if you're an artist, you probably have a blog or feel as if you should have a blog whether that's where you share tutorials or you share about products that you create or you just talk, I don't know, but you probably have felt the pressure to start a blog or to have a blog or you do have a blog. And um, I definitely do. I've been blogging for five years. Actually, I started my blog in December of 2013 as Kylie in Kentucky. Um, I was a travel blogger and I was living in Kentucky at the time. I actually have not lived in Kentucky since 2014. So it's been a long time, hoping to get back there soon. But when I started, I was a travel blogger and I would go to different towns in Kentucky with my mom's borrowed camera because my mom is a photographer. And I would take pictures and I would talk and I would use my blog as a journal. And every Friday I would post a new journal entry and I would go visit my then boyfriend, now husband, and he was living in New York City, and so I would go there, and I would blog, and then I would go to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where he was living for a little while. I would blog about that, and I have the blog linked below if you would like to view it in all of its glory. It was a blog spot or a blogger blog. This was before Squarespace. This was before I knew about Wix or Weebly or WordPress, and I've been through all of those. I've tried them all. So uh, this was before any of that, and my logo is really bad, and um, I don't know. I used it as a journal, really, and uh, when I stopped blogging as a travel blogger in late 2014, so that lasted about a year, and I had a following of about a 1,000 people that would read my blog every week, and I probably could have kept going with that and really grown it into something, into sponsorships and things like that, but I moved to New York City, and I just lost all of my passion for it, but I left the website up because I never wanted to forget about it or to let it go completely, and I always had intentions of coming back to it one day, and I just didn't know that I would be coming back to it as an artist. So while living in New York, I've told the story a million times, I got into lettering at my job where I worked in administration for an advertising agency where I was surrounded by creative people 
and I was exposed to uh, the full Adobe Creative Suite. I had the potential to sit there and just learn everything. And brush lettering was coming in hot on Instagram. And um, I just fell in love with the art of lettering and then was finding blogs about design and everything. And that's where I fell in love with the idea of being a designer and having a blog where I did tutorials and talked about design and things like that. And this is kind of where I first want to start diving into this kind of blogging myth that I want to bust that you have to have a blog. Uh, because first of all, I fell in love with the idea of having a blog and being a blogger because, and I won't name who was the catalyst for this because I still love her art and respect her and she is very successful at what she does and she makes it look easy and glamorous and whatever. And I don't know if this looks glamorous to you or not, but it's not always. And most days I feel like it's, I was lied to and that this is not such a gl glamorous life. Um, like I put makeup on and this scarf like just for this video. So it's not really that glamorous, but um, I fell in love with the idea of becoming a designer and having a blog and doing tutorials and things like that. So I thought that's what I needed to do. And I was also taking courses on creative business because I decided that when I was finally able to quit my job at the advertising agency um, and I was a receptionist, I wasn't anything crazy. So it, it was something that I wanted to quit. There wasn't a lot of potential for me personally to move up in that job that I was going to go full time as a designer, graphic designer and create logos and branding and websites for people. So I was really diving into like the business side, the creative business aspect of things. And everyone was telling me that I needed to blog because blogging is the way to be found on Google. You can be found on Pinterest. You can um, have a place for people to go on your website to get advice. And it just was like, you have to blog, you have to blog, you have to blog. Well, that was four years ago now. And I have gone through many iterations of my blog. I've gone from blogging once a week about art or about design. I've gone through not blogging at all and being totally burnt out and super confused. I've gone through blogging three times a week about topics that I thought people cared about, but they really didn't because I was so confused about what to blog about that I was just blogging about anything. And now I've kind of, le I've kind of, le I've kind of landed on where I feel comfortable now, which is one to three blog posts a month about specific topics. And um, my blog now is sort of, well, I'll get into that. Um, because first I wanna just bust the blogging myth. You do not have to be blogging if you're an artist. You can if you want, and all the tools are there for you. But blogging is a serious commitment. Um, back when I first started on Blogspot, you typed in your stuff, put in your picture, and that was about it. And nobody was doing all of this magazine worthy stuff that there is now. Like people's blogs now are like magazines. And that's a lot of work and a lot of pressure. And, you know, if somebody doesn't have like a professional photographer, it's almost like their blog isn't like that great. It doesn't matter what the content is. That's the perception that people get now. If you don't have like a professional photographer, or like a studio or just whatever. And, you know, I kind of do have a studio and I do have my own photographer, my mom. Um, so I can make things look good, but that's because I genuinely enjoy that process. And it's taken me years to figure out what I want my blog to be. And if I even want or need to have a blog. So. Do you need to have a blog if you're an artist? No, I don't think so at all. If it's not something that you're into, don't worry about it. You don't have to share tutorials, step-by-step um, -step stuff or whatever. Who cares? Um, you can do pretty much the same thing now on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Pinterest. You can share whatever you wanna share, wherever you wanna share it. I do think it's important to be visible on your social media platforms somewhere or on the internet somewhere if you're trying to make a business or if you just wanna show your art off, you have to be somewhere. Um, but you can be in your Instagram stories. You can be on IGTV. I'm not on IGTV, I don't really watch it, but a lot of people are and it seems to be really working for them and they might not necessarily have a blog. 
So there are a lot of options for you to be present and to show your work and to show your process and to let people into your life as much as you want. You can decide how much you tell people, but you can, you can show off your products and your processes and whatever in the way and in the platform that works for you. And I just so happen to enjoy blogging. So where I've come to now is that I like to use my blog as just an extra place for my people to go. If you want to go to my blog, you will find a lot of helpful stuff. And I'm active on Pinterest and I've been able to really, really grow my Pinterest reach significantly. So I get lots and lots of traffic to my website from Pinterest, lots of traffic on Pinterest. I have a lot of very popular blog posts and that's not an accident. You know, that was a lot of hard work that I put in on those and doing research on what gaps needed to be filled in, in the lettering world and bringing what I have to bring to my blog as far as advice and tutorials go. But as I've kind of covered all the major lettering topics. Now I'm using my blog as an opportunity to one to three times a month to challenge myself as an artist and a designer to create something that I haven't seen before or to do my own take on something that I have seen before. So I like to do desktop backgrounds, which are just fun. And that's something that my audience can download and can actually use. And it's fun to create some themed art every month. And it's so simple to do. And that's to me something fun that I enjoy and look forward to. And I use them myself. And then if I do any printables, that's like a fun thing for me to see come to life. I've got a, um, three birthday cards coming up in the month of September, like in three days, cause that's my birthday month. And I wanted to share some birthday cards. Oh, I need some water or some coffee. Let's see. Talking a lot and I'm almost done, promise. Or if I just have a tutorial of something that I thought was really fun to make, then I'll share that and I enjoy that process. But the point is, if you don't want to blog, uh, don't think it's going to make or break your website or your, not your website, but your, your overall business or whatever you're trying to achieve. I think it's good to have a website, but you know what? I could probably just have my top three blog posts on my website, have a link to my courses, have links to my social media, and um, that's about it. And I would probably be doing just fine. And all those extra blog posts and everything don't really amount to a hill of beans unless, you know, I'm just considering something for my audience and just giving back to them. And that's really what I'm doing. Um, so do you need to have a blog? No, but I think you should be present somewhere that makes you excited. And let me tell you, if blogging does make you excited, I think that's good and you can share that with your audience and whatever you're sharing, if you're excited about it, your audience will see that and they'll be excited too. Because that's how I react when someone that I follow does something that they are just so excited about. I can sense that and I will go partake in that. And that's how I feel about my blog. When I'm excited about a post, people that connect with it are going to get so excited and they're going to go there and they're going to share it and they're going to comment and they're going to do it and they're going to share what they made on Instagram and that's what I want and that makes me happy. But if no one shares about it, that's fine because it's something that I decided to do that adds to my skill set. It doesn't take away from my time, doesn't cost me any money, something that I actually like to do. So that's my little spiel on blogging. I'm trying to think if there's any other really important things that I have to say about this. Um, I will say, don't ever do anything just because somebody tells you that you should be doing it because I guarantee that they might have had a great, great response from it um, or people that they coach or whatever have had a good response, but nothing is one size fits all at all, at all, at all. Um, and you can also use your website in whatever way you want to use your website if you have one. If you choose to have one, a lot of people don't. A lot of people just have a Facebook page or an Instagram page and they share things there or they have a YouTube and that's about it. Or a newsletter. I kind of treat my newsletter now like a diary, like a journal. So you can use that in whatever way you want. And that is all I have to say. So wherever you're watching this, please leave a comment and let me know if you enjoyed this, what you think about blogging and uh, what other topics you would like to see me cover in this new talk show, Making Small Talk. It's gonna take me a minute to use that, but anyway. Okay, you can find me on Instagram at Kylie in Kentucky, on Facebook at Kylie in Kentucky. And if you want to hear my podcast, Mrs. Ambitious, that I co-host over on iTunes and Spotify, you can just uh, go there and search 
Mrs. Ambitious. Mrs. is plural, M-I-S-S-E-S. We have a new episode every Tuesday and one on every first Friday of the month. So hope to see you there and I'll talk to you later. Bye.